What's up, y'all? We have Andrew here. He's a great buddy from high school. We've known each other. What, we, where did we meet each other? We played ball. We played basketball. We played basketball. We played all kinds of stuff. So. Yeah, that's right. The first, the first time uh, on that 67, I'll put a picture up here. Uh, Andrew helped me take the engine out. First time, where were we at? CRs or? Yeah, I don't know. Where, where we were, we were, but man. Blue Mountain somewhere. <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah, somewhere up, yeah, up, up north. But, <laughs> but it was fun stuff. So anyway, guys, hey, we're gonna tackle a 8.8 .8 Ford Explorer rear end, and we're gonna kind of show you how to put it in your classic Mustang. Sorry, guys, the wind's really crazy right now. But we're gonna tr show you how to put it in your classic Mustang and show you all the dimensions. I'm actually not going to put it in uh, with a leaf spring setup, but I'm gonna show you how to put the leaf spring setup on it. We're gonna go with a four link on this guy. And so let's get into it. All right, so what we're gonna do here is we're gonna change out this pinion seal because it's kind of leaking. You can see evidence. So it's a good time, guys, if, you, if you've already got your rear end out. <laughs> you've already got your rear end out. If you've already got your rear end out of your car and it's mocked up, I mean, it's a great time just to go ahead and change out the pinion seal. Now, the thing is about these pinion seals and this nut right here, it is specifically torqued down to the right measurement for the in play. And so you can really kind of screw that up if you don't get the right in play. So what you're gonna wanna do is count the threads here. And if you count the threads, then you'll be able to get this thing exactly where it was on this, on this nut. So that's the goal here. We'll see if that happens, but we're, we're gonna hope for the best here. So let's go. Y'all, so some of the advantages of putting an Explorer 8.8 .8 in your classic Mustang are you get the rear disc brakes. You also get 31 spline axles and you can find the limited slip axle. There's some pretty aggressive gear ratios available. And lastly, it's only about a quarter inch wider than the stock 67 through 70 rear end. So it makes it pretty simple swap. All right, y'all. So we are grinding down all the welds and trying to make this all one completely smooth. Uh, well, as smooth as can be. Yeah, and then uh, we got some dust, dust covers to replace. Uh, but man, it's getting there. It's getting close. Here we go. See it was your place. All right, y'all. So now I wanted to share with you how to install a 8.8 .8 Explorer rear end in your classic Mustang. So a way to do that is you'll want to get pick up some spring perches. I'll put the link in the description for these. These are a three and a quarter inch radius. They help out a lot. It saves a lot of time for you whenever you're come time to install these. So get these things. They're awesome. So a spacing on a classic Mustang from 64 to 70 is 43 from perch to perch. 43 inches from perch to perch. So that may sit differently on depending on the year that you're working on. For a 64 through 66 Mustang, this particular rear end will be too wide for the, it to fit underneath your car. You'll have to do some modifications. For the 64 through 66 Mustang modification, you can shorten the driver's side axle and make it the same width as the passenger side. Then you can find an extra passenger side axle and replace the driver's side. But on a 67 through 70, this will actually fit just underneath your, your, your vehicle. So what you wanna do is get 43 inches perch to perch. What that means is from this center hole here, you're gonna get center of that hole to this one, 43 inches all the way across. All right, the next dimension that you'll need to do is to get center on the rear end and then 
measure out 21 and a half inches from each side from that. That'll get you centered and where you need to be. The goal here is to check your measurements twice, right? And weld once. So you don't want to be undoing these welds and redoing the whole thing. So make sure you measure twice, but that's it. that'll give you in the ballpark for how to install this on your classic Mustang. What we're doing guys is, is just gonna make sure that your perches are level. So let's say that let's say they're right where I want them. It may be off a little. <laughs> let's see. If I can get that it's right the train in the center. Uh, uh, uh. There we go. Pretty close. So both of these are are level. Now I know that they're both the same. They're, they're equal distance. Now I come to to this pinion angle, and I want to see it at three and a half on average. It's just it's really close to that point right now. Right about yeah, there, it. dude. It was right, it was pretty close. This so, is the other way, correct? Yeah. So I'm looking at it upside down. And so you're wanting it to face up. So you're making making sure, ask me how I know, I've welded it the wrong way before. <laughs> and I've had to undo it and redo this whole, this whole process. So you wanna make sure you double check this again, but you wanna be angled down, about three and a half is on average. But if you wanna go ahead and wait until your transmission's in your, in your car, that would be ideal, because then you'll be able to take this angle finder, put it on the tail shaft of your transmission and measure your angle that way you can match it up spec on you know so all right guys so we are back at it and we have a four link suspension from ride tech to install we're going to be using the 8.8 explorer rear end that we just modified and put it inside here so let's get to it Some advantages of a four link rear suspension are it reduces the side to side movement of the rear end. It also allows you to run tighter tire to fender clearance. And also the springs now just take care of supporting the vehicle instead of actually supporting and locating the rear end. And links are now free to deal with just locating and the articulation of the rear end. We have the old rear end out of the car and now we're going to start installing the cradle. So to install the cradle, we gotta remove some things. So we gotta remove all your lines. Sometimes you'll have brake lines coming down this area. I don't have my brake lines on yet, so don't have to worry about those on this one. But if you're installing this cradle, you'll have to take those lines off. I'm gonna ins uh, remove this gas line here. Old gas line needs removed anywhere anyway. Probably remove this this uh, hanger, I don't know yet. I'm gonna just kind of mock it up, but I do know that I have to remove this guy here. This is the bumper, and so I'm gonna cut that out. So let's get to it.
safety goggles. I got a lot of nuts. not give me the right u bolt for this. Restart. Brian. What are we doing, dude? We're about to lose our, our engine oh, back shit. apart. <laughs> dude, we've got to go get some hardware with u bolt. It didn't come with the right hardware. I mean, it was in the same box and everything. And Hopefully this guy doesn't snag our engine.
Yo, that puts a wrap on this episode. I can't be more happy with how it turned out. I want to say a big thank you to my friend Andrew, who came out and helped us on this build. The stance is aggressive. Yeah, it's probably not going to be that low in the future, but just to know if you can get it that, that low, it's pretty cool. Y'all please like and subscribe to the channel. It really helps me and motivates me to keep going, and it helps the algorithm. So thanks so much, y'all. Until next time.